How to create Sora's Keyblade in Blender To start off, add in a reference image of the Keyblade. It will save you a lot of time by making the right modeling decisions. Then add a low poly cylinder. I reduced its edges number to 8, it's easier to manipulate for modeling and if you're worried about having a smooth shape for the final render, we'll just add a subdivision modify to it afterwards, it'll smooth everything out. Add loop cuts to the bottom of the blade to extrude those details inwards. Then inset the bottom face with the shortcut I and extrude outwards to create that blue section. Add a loop cut in the middle and scale it down to give it the hourglass shape. For the key part of the blade, we'll just shape it from a plane, divide it in half and add a mirror modifier since it's symmetrical. Add in loop cuts and begin to modify its shapes as such. Check the clipping box for the vertices in the middle to weld together so it remains as one shape and add a solidify modifier to add some thickness. Play with the slider to adjust your desired thickness value. By the way, pro tip, press the forward slash shortcut to isolate the view on the mesh you want to work on so you don't get distracted. Press the forward slash shortcut again to go back to normal view when you're done. We'll model the frame around the handle from a single plane. Inset a face inside and add a center loop cut. Delete the first half, then delete the inset face. Bevel the top corner edge and manipulate the vertices to get that curved look that's bent inwards and then rip the bottom corner edges apart with a shortcut V. In edit mode, add a low poly circle, place it between the torn edges of the bottom corner and make their vertices meet as such. To weld those vertices together, select one vertex then the other. Press M to open the merge menu and select at last. It will merge to the last selected vertex. Or press set first if you want them merged to the first selected vertex or press at center if you want them to merge at the middle distance between them. Then, fill out the faces and make sure they're all quads to avoid weird artifacts when adding a subdivision modifier afterwards. Then, add a mirror modifier to symmetrize it and a solidify modifier to add some thickness. Then, just add a low poly cylinder for the handle itself and scale it appropriately. Then, add another low poly cylinder for those yellow cylinders on the handle's frame. Add a loop cut in the middle and delete the bottom half. Add a mirror modifier and select the z-axis instead of the default x. Extrude and scale the top edges and then extrude them upwards again, creating a mini cylinder. Add a middle loop cut, bevel it and extrude it inwards to add some detail. Once done, duplicate that cylinder for the bottom of the handle's frame and scale it up so it becomes bigger than the top one, just like in the reference picture. Pro tip, it can be useful to change the madcap of the viewport so you can see your mesh under a specific shader or lighting. In the case of the Keyblade, I chose the metal one. I also like to assign materials to each part so I can give them color under the viewport display tab of the material, it's easier to view this way. Now it's time to add the subdivision modifier to each part. You'll immediately notice some of the meshes turn out to look weird. No problem, just crease the edges with shift E and adjust the crease value by sliding your mouse. This allows you to keep your edges sharp without being softened by the subdivision modifier. For the chain holder at the bottom of the keyblade, I created it by adding a bezier curve, deleting the first half and adding a mirror modifier. I'll shape it into a U shape and then I'll add it thickness by playing with its bevel value in the curve properties right there. When you're done, make sure to convert it into a mesh. For the chain, I'll add a low poly torus. I'll duplicate it in edit mode and rotate it to create the second link. Then I'll add an array modifier to make it as long as I want. I'll choose the constant offset feature and increase the count as much as I want. For the Mickey emblem, it's very simple. Just add a circle, then add two more in edit mode. Make them look like Mickey and scale the ears down a bit. Then add a solidify modifier to add thickness. Now if you encounter a problem like I have where one of the circle's thickness grows out on the opposite side, select its faces and recalculate its normals by pressing shift N. Once all the pieces of the keyblade are modeled and placed, it's time to get into shading. This time is rather easy since it's all made out of brushed metal. I created a material based on the principal BSDF shader. Increase the metallic value to 1 and add a noise texture and scale it down on the 1 axis. Adjust its black and white values with a color ramp node and plug it into the roughness value. Also add a bump node and plug the color ramp node in its height socket and plug that bump node in the normal socket of the principled BSDF shader and adjust the value. And that is how you create Sora's Keyblade in Blender. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as fast as I can. Peace.